G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here. What's the big deal with LEGO Monorail and what makes it so epic? In this video we're going to have a comprehensive look at LEGO Monorail Airport Shuttle Set 6399 released in 1990. We will look at what makes it so great, the mechanics of how it works and a quick buyer's guide on the rarer and expensive parts. We will also give a quick review in terms of build experience, value for money, displayability, playability and finally finish off with a time lapse speed build and commentary. This video is brought to you by Macatsim Holiday homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So here we have the Lego Airport Monorail Shuttle Set 6399 and people always love their monorail so just going through and wondering what makes monorail so great some consider monorail to be like their holy grail type sets they only ever made three of these which was this one here and then two space type ones so the airport one is the only one which you know would fit nicely within a lego city itself for mine this is a great set and i can really see the appeal for it and why so many people lust after it and want to get it and also why it's pretty hard to come by so we'll just quickly run through what's included in the set and just because of space reasons and try to film it up here I've got the edge of it precariously hanging over the edge there but supported underneath so basically what you get is two sort of station stops so on this side here you'd have like little bus stops and things little hot dog vendor it is missing a sticker um, these are all pretty much vintage parts and everything then you come up to the actual monorail station itself which also has one of these little stop go functions here which we'll get into a bit later then obviously it's got a fair amount of track there and then you can go over to like the other sort of side and you've got another little platform here and another road plate and just a few little incidental type bits and pieces. I've currently got it sort of in this double loop configuration so that it can sort of run around the tier and then go back underneath it and then come up around. It's probably the most space effective directions but you do also have the options with the instructions to have like figure eights and things like that so and that's just with the pieces that came out of the box without any additional ones. So the set is mostly complete the only thing which I'm missing is some of the minifigures I think there's about nine in total I'm never too worried about minifigures and I've managed to pick up these ones and they also have their little suitcases when I got the set it was about 90% complete and that was sort of in a pre-lockdown world since lockdown has happened uh, and COVID and things like that the prices on these things have gone astronomically stupid uh, much like all the other sort of collectibles out there in the market whether it's comic books or trading cards Pokemon Magic the Gathering Funko Pops all that sort of stuff so it can be a little bit deceiving but at the moment now there's probably you know with what's there maybe about 500 pounds or 650 american dollars worth of stuff as i mentioned earlier part of the reason is because well monorail was only made in three sets so just going through and pointing out a few things so if you are ever looking to go through and either pieces together yourself or buy them you've got a bit of an understanding of what's involved most of the track pieces even in a second hand condition range from about five to ten dollars each and then as you get into some of the more elaborate pieces probably you can see it better over here like these ones here which have the the turning on it that's you know ten to twenty dollars and then some of the curved pieces as well is also about 10 to 20 dollars per piece so you can see by the time you put together all that sort of track just on those prices it does start to add up quite quickly also driving it up is either unique or rare pieces like this base plate here it's a vintage one this is the only set that it ever came in so trying to get these even secondhand you're looking anywhere between about 50 to 80 dollars per these little plates and that's in the gray you've got another one obviously in the green which isn't anywhere as expensive but again the same sort of thing it only come in, in a limited number of sets and if some of the most expensive and critical pieces are involved here and you have the motor is actually in this middle piece here if i can slide this up so that's the actual motor there just the motor secondhand by itself is anywhere from about 50 to 100 dollars just for that motor and then you also then have what's in here is like a battery box uh, you can kind of see here if i then start taking it apart a bit more it has the gray on off switch here and then one of these little connecting pieces which go up and over so these are the two most 
important things that if you are trying to piece together obviously making sure that the motor works because of how expensive that is and then the battery pack in there if you lift it up there's actually a 9 volt which fits straight into there to power the whole thing even some of these bases that they sit on this black one here and then obviously this one over here as well they can go from anywhere from about 10 to 20 dollars each Pretty much everything else in the set is non-critical apart from, you know, the motor, the battery box and that cable. You know, if you're missing one of these, you can still have it running, you know, with just that sort of parts there. And then if you don't have the full track, then you can make up whatever you've got. But if you don't have these pieces here, you won't be running anything. So make sure, given the expense and rarity of them as well, if you do get them, that they are in good working order. So if we take the actual monorail itself and flip it over, can go through and show you how this actually works so as we were saying before you got the motor in the middle and what it's based off is a mechanical piece that slides in and out here so when it's in the middle like this it's in its rest stop so it's not going to do anything and if i slide it that direction it'll make the monorail go one way and if i slide it this direction it'll make it go a different way so i'll just show you how that works now and you should be able to hear the motor turning so that's one direction and then you flick it through to get to the other direction. When I first got the monorail, I didn't know how this worked and there's no clear idea in the instructions. So I originally just sort of got it like this and then put it on the track. Thought that the motor must have been dead or something like that because it didn't matter what you do with the batteries in terms of turning it on and off. You couldn't get it to go. And then I accidentally just bumped it and it came to life. But it did take a little while to figure that out. And it's not inherently obvious if you don't really know what's going on, but it's great because then this little mechanical feature enables it to, when it goes to the stations, with this piece here, at the moment it's set to basically stop, and then if I set it one direction you'll see this piece here will start to slide and move about. So that went in a little bit, so if it hits it, then it'll make it go that way, and then if I turn it the other direction, now it's slid all the way out a matching piece under there which is moved in and out as you turn it so basically it's a mechanical thing which will go through when it hits that edge there you will get this pin and slide it in and out so when it's like this pointing in it's halfway between so what it's going to do is it's going to force this pin here to sit in the middle which will make it stop so if I just go through and turn it on you should be able to see it go and stop and that's just because, again, you can see now when it's gone down there, it's just pushed that little black pin into the center position, which is the off mode. This time around, I've got it set so that it's going to basically have this closest and hit the pin, so it will turn it back in the direction that it's come from. Give that a quick little go. And you can see there how it made it go back in the opposite direction. So this time around, we'll have it set to be going that direction. So when the monorail comes around, it should just keep on going straight through. So having it set in the same exact position, and then we'll have the train come from that direction, it should then make it bounce back the way that it came. Haven't made any changes. Now you can see it's bounced back in the other direction. So what this means is that if you have these two set, one for that direction and then one for this direction here, on a closed little part like that, it will actually just bounce backwards and forwards and we'll have a quick look at that. And that's all just being done off that really simple mechanical mechanism. There's no complicated sensors or anything just to make that bounce backwards and forwards. And that's another reason why people can really enjoy the monorails, because you don't need a full complete loop to be able to have it just moving around the city going backwards and forwards all the time. Another reason people like monorails is that you can actually elevate them up. So if you were building a city or anything like that, you can put things underneath them and just have the monorail sort of floating over the top. So you don't lose all that sort of space when you're actually trying to do it. Just looking at a section of the monorail tract itself, it's actually really, really well designed and deceptively, it's really, really solid. 
So we've had lots of other sort of kids' little toys where you've got train tracks or monorail tracks or something similar. And what happens with them is you put them up and because they're not well constructed or the way that they join is very well thought out, you spend most of the time trying to fix the track because if you touch it, it falls to pieces and things like that. Whereas this has been done so well that that doesn't happen. So what you've got is sort of like on the ends here, male and female parts, which then they go straight in and you have to do it in this order. And then once they're in, you clip in the one by fours and try to do it with one hand. But there you go, you can sort of get them in there like that. And then once that goes in, that is really, really rigid. Here we have our monorail train upside down again. And you can see you've got this little cog here with all the grooves in it. And then on the track, you've got all these little grooves. And that's how it works, basically. That gear cog there is turning and it just rolls along there and it sort of pulls it along. So the speed that you've seen the monorail go at is pretty much the top speed and it doesn't go much faster unless you've got a slightly better charge in your actual 9 volt or you've re-engineered this somehow to make that cog go faster. So again here we have the motor and then we have the main battery unit there and then when you lift this up here you can actually see the on off switch for the motor is actually this little grey pin in here and at least on this one this is kind of a bit tricky and sometimes not all that sticking very well so just something to watch out for and very easy you just have it turned off like this and go okay yep that's good. It's not going anywhere, it's all turned off. And then you come back tomorrow and you find that actually because you didn't turn that grey switch off, it's drained the battery a fair bit. So obviously when you finish, just make sure to turn it off. The way that these cars go together and the coupling mechanism on them is quite unique as well. I'll just do it with this one because it doesn't have the power cable which you need to disconnect. But you basically just come along and it pops out more or less like that. And the interesting thing with these is you've only got the wheels at one end or the front because uh, basically it relies upon that being inserted in there into place to hold up the back end and then that's how it will go around and um, be on its turning circle Another reason people like monorail is because of how tight these curves can be so it doesn't take as much space up so we've got just standard track for railways versus monorail and in this section here it's just you can see if I just move that slightly down you've basically got two curved bits to turn it and down at the bottom here I've put two 32 by 32 base plates so you can see the split there and you can see from here it will go all the way across and then still with that gantry there I have a bit of space left over so you can do a turning circle there with him 64 studs. Compare that with a turning circle of a standard train unit. I've actually got a third 32 by 32 white base plate here. So if I just pull that together and line them all up there and then line that up there, it's all approximate. But you can see it takes just under um, three 32 by 32 base plates to get the tightest circle that you can on your traditional track there. You've got about eight studs or so left over. So again, from a space consideration, monorail is much more economical and you don't need as much space to be able to do everything with it. So if monorail is so great, why don't they bring it back? Can't really give a definitive answer on that. And a lot of what I'm going to say is just what I'm sort of seen on the internet. So take it with a grain of salt. But if you do happen to know more, then by all means, leave a comment below. Love to know. So I believe that the actual track itself, the pattern on it was done by a third party and potentially even during the time that this was being released back in the 1990, um, they were having a problem with that company and I believe that company itself went out of business and went bankrupt. So the status on the pattern is very dubious. Again, that's just from what I understand. And the other thing for a lot of the time, I think generally Lego is not too interested in bringing anything back as major waves unless... They uh, want to do some sort of anniversary special or something like that. And at the time that this was released, it was like their top tier type set and things like that. So I know it's quite expensive and one of their flagship products at the time. The build experience on this set is pretty good. You have to consider it's a 1990s set, so it's about 30 years old. I didn't have the original instructions for these, and lego.com themselves don't actually have any, so you have to rely on other third parties. And at this stage, the third parties have only ever put out sort of JPEGs of each page and the instructions. The problem with this is that sometimes when you're looking at certain pages you can't see the split lines and tell where pieces start and end. 
This is because the resolution on those JPEGs is not fantastic. It's enough to be able to see the general feel, but not specifically some areas. Being old instructions, they don't have for each step the pieces that you need for that step. So it is a little challenging when you don't know what the pieces are and you can't see the split lines as to what you really need. I have created a PDF from these JPEGs that I've found and that will be available on my website or a link around this video because trying to manage JPEGs is a little bit tricky. At least having a PDF, you can have them all together. You do have a nice variety of builds between the monorail, the carriages themselves, the track, the couple of stations, some stairs, the platforms. It comes together to give a great set. The playability on this set is really good. Obviously you've got the narrative of it being an airport shuttle and getting passengers from one terminal to another and the signs of the monorails opening up and getting people in and out, the platform stairs, all that sort of stuff work really well and you've got the plates there to integrate it into other parts of the city and roadways. It's also very satisfying just seeing the monorail loop around and go backwards and forwards and hit the stops and either stop or bounce back in the other direction and ping pong around. Value for money is a hard one to talk about because obviously it's a set which is 30 years old and it was always expensive to get on the secondary market and now COVID's come along, it's even that much more expensive. But if you look at it in terms of value, in terms of the enjoyment you can get out of it and those aspects, this is definitely one of those sorts of sets where I think it would be one of the last ones I'd ever want to sell. It's so good just to be able to build it and you have a great time doing it and really enjoying it and just seeing it go around, you just don't get bored with it. Displayability is obviously an issue in terms of space. Here I've shown it as close to the original configuration in the instructions so you can see it in the way that it was originally designed to be displayed but as with all things Lego you'll change it and modify and adapt it to however you want to have it. I'm certainly thinking about putting it together with some buildings so it can be bouncing backwards and forwards and it's one of those sorts of items where people when they see it they want to talk about it and play with it and touch it. So if you ever do get the opportunity to acquire one or acquire the core components of it and then build out from there it's certainly something you'd want to think about but certainly as we've discussed here it can be something that gets quite expensive. So a quick one page summary of all of that would be that your build experience is about 85%, your value for money is about 80%, mainly just being brought down because it is so expensive on the secondary market. Playability it's fantastic at 95% and displayability also gets high points with a 95% as well. This gives an average score of 89%, a truly amazing set if you can get your hands on one. From here we're just going to have a look at a quick time-lapse speed build so you can sort of see everything that goes on. So start off with one of the gantries and now building out one of the actual monorail cars themselves. This one has the actual motor in it there, you can see that grey button and just plug in the actual motor part itself. The black part will sit on top of the red studs and those red studs around the base of them actually have the metal connecting parts which allow the you know the voltage to go from the battery into the actual motor which you see there in the middle and now building out the other end which will have an extra seat in it because it doesn't have that actual motor there sitting there so and they're nice little fun builds so I, I do reminisce on the four stud wide type builds where even your cars were like four studs wide and what they could manage to fit into that now you know they've obviously gone out to six and eight um, and here we're going to be building the sort of far side, the smaller sort of little platform and station and it's just a pretty basic sort of builds in terms of building up enough to have a bit of a platform and then going through and just having the signal stops there as well. Those curved pieces here which we're putting in, they're also quite rare and quite difficult to get so you can, might have to be patient. There's two of them there and they can get quite expensive as well. So not absolutely critical but something to be aware of. Now we're coming over to the main I guess platform which has the little hot dog stand down below and then the stairs leading up to an elevated sort of section and in between where we're building at the moment there you then also can have the track running underneath so you get that dual layer effect there in quite a small little space. Um, And just as you're going through there, you just got to make sure that you're getting all the bits in the right way. Also too, when you go to put on the actual um, switch, there's two that come in the set and they're a little bit different in terms of where the actual uh, piece that juts out sits. So with this one, you just got to make sure it will sit on top of where that middle beam is there, the black one that you can see. And this is where we've gone through and started to try to put it together. So if you've got it in the wrong, the wrong one, that won't sit properly and you'll know it that way. 
putting the monorail cars onto the track is actually relatively straightforward and they don't really ever come off. If you've enjoyed and or gotten something out of this video, then hit that thumbs up button and or consider subscribing. Has this video piqued your interest in monorail or do you already own a set? Sound off in the comments below on what you thought of our complete guide to the LEGO Shuttle Airport monorail set. Or just leave the word monorail and we'll know that you watched the whole video. To see the live stream of this monorail build, click here. Ever wondered what a LEGO SpaceX build might be like? Check out this video. To save money on your next Amazon purchase, have a look at this video. Otherwise, this video might be of interest. Thanks for watching and that's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things LEGO and lifestyle.